Hello, folks. Today is Friday, January 19th, 2024. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino. It's snowing outside. We got some video game news to talk about. Let's get you guys caught up. Uh, the first bit of news involves Ubisoft and a quote from an executive uh, that has some people buzzing. Let's, let's just say that. Speaking to gamesindustry.biz, a Ubisoft executive talked about the subscription model and how Ubisoft wants to essentially beef up the numbers. They want to have more people subscribing digitally to their, you know, game service, whatever. What is the Ubisoft one called? Ubisoft Plus? No. UB, UB Play Plus Ubisoft Gold? Connect Play Gold. Ugh. So it was a pretty interesting discussion, you know, from an executive standpoint. But uh, the biggest takeaway from it, it's a long quote. I won't read the whole thing here, but I will link it for you. Uh, but essentially, he's talking about in order for the subscription model to really grow, especially on the console side, uh, they need players to become or feel more comfortable with not owning games, which... Doesn't sound great, it sounds very dystopian, uh, but this executive also goes on to be sympathetic and explain that they own physical stuff still too. I don't think that makes a difference personally, but the points made are kind of interesting where, you know, music is all digital now. People don't care about the CDs they own. I mean, most people, uh, I still own all my CDs. Uh, then you have movies, which is now moving more and more and is pretty much almost all digital. Uh, the headlines last week was that Best Buy was closing up shops selling physical movies. Uh, and they're saying that gaming is taking the longest. And I take that quote as like empowerment. I say, yes, we are the ones holding the line, damn it, against, against physical stuff. You know, gaming is different. It just feels different about like buying it and owning it. I don't know. Not to go on like a tangent, but like for me, it's kind of like a book even, like where it's like a video game. It's like you play it, you finish it, you put it on the shelf and you sit back and you look at it and you're like, you're like happy that it's there, you know? So yeah, the main takeaway, the thing people have been running with is that like Ubisoft wants you to feel more comfortable not owning your games. And I would say, all the companies do. It's already dicey with digital ownership and it's only probably going to get worse. But uh, as a counterpoint to that, uh, analyst Matt Piscatello, who I recommend following, he's a great follow, always has some really good insights, uh, says here in a tweet I will link, subscription growth has flattened and subscription services on console and PC platform accounts for only 10% of total video game content spending in the US. I get that some people want to protect their preferred model, but the idea that subs will become dominant is unsupported by data. Real actual smart guy there saying that, uh, but also the thread is interesting talking about how cannibaliz cannibalization isn't as much as you'd expect. And uh, it's interesting, but I still think even despite that, the, co the corporations are inv investing massive amounts of money in subscription services. So even if right now it has flattened, I still think that the big players have enough money to brute force this, to be in the red for a couple of years to get it where they want it. So I would say just do what you can. If you like physical, continue to buy physical. If you really like physical, go out and support those smaller companies that put out like limited run physical editions of games. It's a much bigger topic. You know, we can't cram it all in this video. I'd love to talk about this like all day. Maybe I'll do it somewhere else or Game Ranks will make another video, who knows. But for now, I definitely wanna know what you guys think about this whole thing. The whole quote from Ubisoft, uh, the, the analyst, uh, insights, or even also the quotes from Sven Vinke, uh, the lead guy from Baldur's Gate 3, Larian Studios, uh, talking about how subscription stuff is going to hurt the industry overall. So there are a lot of different opinions, and I'd love to hear yours down there. Now in other news, something pretty cool, uh, a new video game studio to watch. New studios are cropping up all the time, but this new studio, 100 Star Games, uh, has been founded by Jamie Walker and Sefton Hill, formerly of Rocksteady Games. If you were deep in the trenches back during the Arkham games, you know that those were the guys behind those games. They left, uh, you know, a couple of years back in the middle of Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League development, and uh, now they have this studio. We don't really know what they're working on. It's just been described, according to Polygon, as a AAA game studio startup that will consist of, and I quote, only 100 industry veterans and emerging talents. So I try to mention studio announcements, uh, studio openings when they are significant here and there, because 
uh, it's something to keep an eye on. Even if we won't hear anything from them for years, it's just something to maybe look forward to. Hopefully a new team making a cool new thing to play. And speaking of that, uh, we got a little bit of a glimpse at new Battlefield or like what the deal is. So Battlefield, the brand, has went back to the drawing board in, in recent years. Uh, Dice LA is now a separate studio called Ripple Effect, and they are working on something according to a job listing uh, that is separate from the regular Battlefield brand. Uh, regular Dice is focusing on revamping a new Battlefield. Uh, there's another studio formed within there to help with the single player, but this studio, Ripple Effect, is apparently working on a different standalone Battlefield thing. And a new job posting caught by Video Games Chronicle and Tech for Gamers. It's a VFX director role, and it says it's also looking for a senior 3D artist to help create the most realistic and exciting destruction effects in the industry. EA has been saying that Ripple Effect is working on an entirely new Battlefield experience that will complement and build upon the series' foundations. So, with the destruction, with that, what does that mean? My brain just goes, ah, oh, new bad company game. You can only dream, right? That's probably not what they're doing, but you never know. Still, something is going on. There's something in the works, and I thought it was a good time to just mention how DICE and how EA is changed, changing up how they're making the Battlefield game so that hopefully the next one makes everybody happy. Can that even happen in this day and age? I don't know, but we'll just have to wait and see. Jumping over here real quick to talk about today's sponsor, a longtime sponsor, NordVPN. Now, NordVPN is the number one thing we install on all of our machines at GameRanks, at home for me, uh, for online security. Now, you might know this, but with NordVPN, all of your internet data stays safe behind a wall of next generation encryption. But some of you might be asking, like, what can you do with a VPN? They're, they're great for online security and safety. Of course, we all know that, but there's a lot of fun stuff you could do with these things. If you're shopping online, some prices uh, for certain places vary by region. Region. So if you switch on NordVPN and change your location, sometimes you can get access to better prices. Maybe 2024, you're trying to travel more. You might be able to find cheaper airline tickets or if you're shopping for games on a third party site. I've made it a habit. I even have NordVPN on my phone before I go and buy something. I, I switch on the VPN and look around real quick. There's so much fun stuff we could do too because you can switch it on, change your location uh, and, and change where the streaming services think you are. Some of the streaming platforms have different movies available in like their European version or the Canadian version. So it's good to mess around and check things out. So if you want to check it out, it's fun to use. It's easy to set up. It does help support the show. Uh, the best deal you can get is through our link. You can also try it out because they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So all you got to do is head to nordvpn.com slash game ranks or click the link in the description down below for a huge discount and four additional months. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash game ranks and big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring our videos. Next up, some Xbox news. Uh, they hosted a developer direct, just taking the time to showcase uh, little glimpses of upcoming games, uh, direct from the people making the games. Uh, it, we got a good highlight on Ara, History Untold. Uh, this is kind of like a rethinking, uh, a spiritual successor to something like Civilization. And uh, as someone who often goes through big bouts of uh, Civilization benders, uh, I'm a total addict. Uh, they're saying the right things here with this game. Along with that, we got a new look at Obsidian's Avowed. This is the big RPG that people have been waiting for. They have confirmed it's coming later in 2024, and I still need to see more. I don't think they showed enough here. The combat and the swapping tools looks very cool on the fly, but I, I still want to know more. We also got a look at Hellblade 2 uh, and just kind of like the development process, and we know that it's coming May 21st now. Finally, a release date. Along with that, uh, the developers have confirmed that this is a shorter experience, like it is, it is not a massive big open game. Uh, it is very much in line with their previous game. And with that, it's going to be digital only and it's going to cost $50 if you buy it. This of course comes into the whole like Game Pass thing. If you have Game Pass, you just play it. Is this type of thing better on Game Pass? Like there's that whole conversation with which goes with what we were talking about earlier with the subscription stuff. I'll leave you guys to debate that in the comments. I think that would need to be a whole video in and of itself. A lot of people aren't going to be happy with that price, but the only thing I'll say is that I'm glad that they didn't take Hellblade 2 and inject it with a bunch of Microsoft money and then try and turn it into a big open world game to like justify the expense. Like I'm glad that it's staying true to the, you know, refined, smaller, shorter experience that the original game was. Not defending that price point or anything like that. 
but I really, really like the first Hellblade and I'm glad that like it's not spiritually changing. But we're gonna have to wait and see how general audiences take to it and if it's any good. Uh, also, along with that, uh, in this developer direct, we got our first look at the Indiana Jones game. It is executive produced by Todd Howard, but the people making it are machine games. The people behind, most recently, the Wolfenstein games. So that's cool. This is Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. This looks to me like it understands Indiana Jones straight up. Uh, Troy Baker is doing the voice of Indiana Jones, and it sounds all right. You can tell it's not Harrison Ford, but it sounds like he understands the inflections in Harrison Ford's very unique voice. I understand why they didn't get Harrison Ford for the game, because that would have been the entire budget. That guy's like the most expensive man in the world at this point. But it is a first person game, which makes sense because it's machine games, it's what they do. I'm silly, I still was hoping for like a third person action game. I was a little disappointed. I, a lot of people are clowning on me for that take. Look, why are why is everybody in the comments allowed to have bad takes constantly? And then I can't just have, let me have my naive, silly opinion, okay? Hey, regardless, I, I've seen in comments, like I made a whole video about this on my channel, youtube.com slash Jake uh, It seems like pretty, pretty people are pretty divided uh, in, in, it ter in terms of it being first person or third person. First person does give it some unique aspects. I'm not gonna lie. The combat and stuff looks really cool. You grab dudes, hit them with a whip, punch them in the face. And what I like is that it seems like it's going to be more of a linear thing. Like there's gonna be branching stuff. They mentioned puzzles and side puzzles and stuff like that. But I hope that this is more of a linear, straightforward game because again, like you can't force the Indiana Jones thing into like some weird giant open world game or something more cynically made. So I just hope this understands Indiana Jones, tells a cool story. It's between Raiders and Last Crusade. So that's a good time for just a regular old Indiana Jones adventure. And again, I think like machine games, like the cutscenes in Wolfenstein and everything going on in Wolfenstein, like they, they understand storytelling and I think they've always had a cinematic quality to them. So I'm looking forward to that. The biggest news from this though, interestingly enough, is that it's coming this year. I didn't expect that. I thought it would be years before we'd see this thing. So yeah, there's something to look forward to. Next up, some things uh, releasing this week. As of right now, The Last of Us Part Two uh, Remastered is out on PS5. I did a before you buy for it. It looks pretty much the same, but like, you know, better resolution and frame rates um, if you were looking to play or replay. Uh, but that other, that mode that they included in the $10 upgrade, if you already own it, uh, no return is a lot of fun. It's just like a roguelike arena mode where you can play as Joel or whoever and run around and kill shit. And I think that's pretty fun. Also, Pal World is releasing an early access this weekend. Uh, this is the game where it's like Pokemon with guns. I am in. I don't really have anything to say about it yet. Other than that, Pokemon with guns, yes. We need more games like that. Let's do Kirby with guns. Let's do, uh, let's do Animal Crossing with guns. Let's do uh, NHL 2K12 with guns. Anyway, I digress. Uh, the other thing I wanted to link is uh, we finally got a gameplay reveal trailer for Frostpunk 2. This is definitely more of a cinematic trailer, but it shows a little bit what you expect from the layouts of the city. I loved the original Frostpunk. I've been looking forward to this, and this trailer is incredible. It's a game that on the surface is kind of boring if you think about it. Like, how do you make that cool in a trailer? They nailed the feeling of playing the original game. Being a leader is so challenging, in, in I, I assume, in real life, uh, and with like, starving people and like a never ending winter. Like the stress is so hot. It's a really good trailer. If you're not interested in Frostpunk 2, I still recommend checking this out because this is just really, really well done. I'm, I'm excited for this game. And in other news, Activision is going to close your game, shut down your game if it finds you cheating. Yes, in the news, uh, Modern Warfare 3 and the previous two games uh, with the Ricochet anti-cheat software. Uh, if you're playing on PC with a mouse and keyboard and it detects you're using like auto aim or anything like that, it will now apparently be able to close out your game, which is pretty crazy. Good, screw those cheaters, yeah. right? But like, it's also crazy that like they have that much level of a control of your application on your device, right? Isn't that like weird? That part's scary. That's a little weird. But also don't cheat. Also don't cheat. Don't cheat. Now in some other news, uh, let's talk about Rock Band 4, a game that people still play, a game that is still supported, but unfortunately, not anymore. Harmonix posted a statement saying, after eight years of weekly Rock Band 4 DLC releases, we're here to let you know that January 25th will be the last DLC release of the Rock Band 4 era. All other live services will continue as normal, including Rival Seasons Online Play and everything else, but yeah, 
end of an era. Incredibly impressive support for a really cool game from a genre that most people will argue is dead, but the rock band community is strong and held on. And the fact that Harmonix backed that up, it's pretty cool. It was still putting out DLC. Yes. In the year 20... Yes. Where were you? They needed you. Incredibly impressive. And they say in their blog post, uh, well over 3,000 songs as DLC and well over 3,000 if you include the game soundtracks. It, there is so much here. I linked the blog post. Really impressive stuff and end of an era. And I'm, I'm curious to see what Harmonix does next because they've changed over the years, but they're always trying to th rethink things and come up with cool things. Also, more video game news. Can you believe it? I may have missed the news like a week or so back where they announced... Jack Black is going to be in the Minecraft movie as Steve. That's perfect. Jack Black, video games, it just works, in my opinion. Animate the whole movie. Don't animate Jack Black as Steve. Oh, do like a Roger Rabbit thing. <laughs> That'd be so good. Give him the blue shirt. Tight blue shirt. Excellent. And don't mention it. And just all. green screen him into Minecraft world. That's... That's cinema. Uh, but in other news, the biggest news that hit this week is that an Until Dawn movie is coming. Yes, a movie based on a game that very much celebrated horror movies. It is from David F. Sandberg, who most recently directed the Shazam movies, but uh, he has roots in horror. And the screenwriter behind uh, It, Annabelle, and The Nun. Until Dawn was already crafted by like good horror people, so half of that just works for itself. Uh, again, like it, the fact that it's like derivative of other horror movies, I, I say just have fun with this. Just do it like the game, have fun, have teens in the snowy woods getting killed by, spoiler alert, something very cool that we don't see in a lot of movies actually recently. So just go for it. I hope it's fun, we'll see. Get the original cast in it, that would be sick. Let's, let's do that, I don't know. Uh, but I wanna know what you guys think about this decision. The video game movie show thing continues to ramp up. So that's why I tend to mention it more in this show. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about everything going on this week. That's the news we wanted to get you caught up on. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Xbox stuff, the Indiana Jones first person versus third person debate, avowed, uh, Ubisoft talking about subscription services and how they don't really want you to own games. Get comfortable with that. And of course, what are you playing this weekend? There's a pinned comment at the top of the comment sections. Uh, we ask for research purposes, what are you playing? So we can kind of cater videos to you. So be sure to comment there. But if you want to yell at me directly, you can find me on all the social medias at Jake Baldino or on my other YouTube channel, Jake Baldino. Where I talk about Indiana Jones and Robocop and shit. Uh, let me know what you think about the news. Thank you guys for being here. We're always here to get you caught up real quick. Clicking the like button helps us out. Thank you. We're going to go outside and shovel snow. Have a great weekend. Be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. Pizza's on me.